Tower of Fantasy, a new MMO gacha that is akin to the likes of Genshin Impact with some differences. Well, a lot of differences, to be honest. But whether you like those differences or not, what I'm interested in is the world that they have built. And in this video, we're going to check out the initial lore setting of the world of Aida, the calamity that has occurred and the current state of the world. In this world, everything that happened to humanity and all the actions that led to the current events can be traced back to a single source, a source of immense energy and power known as Omnium. This energy source was something humanity sought after ever since it was discovered. Unfortunately, this power source was highly unstable, and despite its potential, its power could not be drawn out by humanity, until the arrival of the comet Mara. This comet is one if not the only celestial body that is full of stable Omnium. This would lead humanity to create the interstellar colonization plan in order to mine the stable Omnium from Mara. With the plan in place, humanity would set upon the stars and become a spacefaring race. They would set their eyes on the planet known as Aida. Not simply because it's a livable planet or because of any resources within, but because it was the perfect staging ground in order to mine the stable Omnium from the comet Mara. And so humanity blazed through space and set foot within Ida. Now the next part of their plan was to trap the comet Mara within the orbit of Ida. And in order to do so, humanity built a large energy channeling tower to force Mara into the orbit of Ida and fix it in place. By combining a number of Omnium towers, the plan succeeded and the mining of the stable Omnium would become a reality. This tower was later known as the Tower of Fantasy. The power that led humanity here was the power of Omnium, and now that they have a source of stable Omnium, it became fairly easy to use and allowed the development of new technology that advanced humanity's understanding and progress by centuries. Omnium would allow humanity to forge a utopia as more Omnium would be mined from the comet Mara. Developments with Omnium would include, but not limited to, easier travel through space, enhanced superhuman augmentations, elemental manipulation, matter manipulation, gravity manipulation, the creation of the simulacrum system, advancement in the medical fields, humanoid cat girls, yes, that's canon, and most importantly, time manipulation. One of the organizations that was leading humanity was known as Hykros and they were interested in time manipulation to the point of obsession. Now you may have heard that Hykros was created after the Calamity, but this may not be the case as it was many of their projects that would lead to the Calamity. But this is more of something we probably will discover in the future. Through research and development, the best scientists of Hykros were able to freeze the age of their bodies in time making them near immortal through age. This was an immense breakthrough for Hykros and would ultimately doom them to hubris as they would continue to push the boundaries of Omnium further and further. And with humanity's prosperity, in their eyes, Omnium would be a source of limitless energy and power. As cliche as it is, humanity and limitless power never leads to anything good in the end and trying to push the power of Omnium would lead to the near total annihilation of the civilization of Ida. This event would be known as the Calamity. Unbeknownst to humanity, Omnium had a side effect with all the energy it outputted, a type of radiation not yet discovered from the usage of Omnium. How it went undetected for years is quite a mystery to me as well as You'd think that they expected such a thing from something that generates an insane amount of energy. The radiation emitted from Omnium would turn living creatures into aberrations through a violent process of transformation, turning them essentially into zombie-like creatures, some of which have different mutations making them deadlier than the rest of their kin. They would be called aberrants and the sickness would spread all throughout Ida. When Hykros finally discovered that it was Omnium radiation causing the blight, 
they would develop suppressors to keep the radiation in check, but it would already be too late by then. Many have died and the world is on the brink of collapse, and many believe Highcross to be the perpetrator of the radiation poisoning. A large group of survivors would band together to oppose Highcross over Ida, and they would be known as the heirs of Ida. Led by an enigmatic sage, their campaign against Highcross would eventually turn them into a force capable of challenging Highcross and possibly taking over. So Highcross in their hubris thought that they would be able to fix this calamity by turning to the source that caused it in the first place, Omnium. They would attempt a temporal retracement or time reversal where they would return the world to a previous state, a state before its collapse. Wanting to completely erase the years the radiation had taken hold and hoping to prevent the disaster. However, the experiment would fail. It's suspected that the heirs of Ida sabotaged the launching of the experiment and due to this, the Tower of Fantasy would erupt in a temporal explosion decimating the entire region and obliterating everything around it. Even spacefaring vessels that were on patrol would be affected by this explosion and would be destroyed, but a few were still able to return to Ida. Even more radiation would be released into the atmosphere, and for now at least, Asperia would be separated from the rest of the other continents. However, it is unsure whether the explosion simply erased everything or the people we see now got isolated in time-space, something we may learn more about in the future. Ever since then, civilization within Ida would become fractured into different shelters, bandit groups, and aberrants. Meanwhile, Hycross would lay low in their flying city, preparing, developing, and waiting for the right moment so that they may correct their mistakes. The heirs of Ida would continue to make their advancements in preparation to bring Highcross down once and for all. Omnium would still be used within Ida with suppressors, keeping the radiation at bay. But despite its lush scenery and seemingly thriving lives of the people that still live here, losing power with your suppressor could easily lead to a fate worse than death. 50 years have passed since the events of the Calamity, and the people of Ida fare pretty well enough. While Hycross is still laying low, soon the plans of the heirs of Ida would clash with that of Hycross. Will the world survive another clash from these two factions? Well, we'll find out eventually. It's a good thing the simulacrum saved the creation of the Catgirls, so maybe it isn't all that bad. But that's pretty much it. A few things though, there are some inconsistencies in the lore, some places say that Hycross was only formed after the Calamity, but in game it's clear that Hycross has been there from even before the Calamity, and their research and development was and is still focused on eternity and time. So for now, I went with Hycross was already with humanity before the Calamity, rather than after. And it may be cliche, but they might have something to do with the Tower of Fantasy blowing up. Anyway, it's been a while, so I have been playing Tower of Fantasy recently, and while the world isn't as interesting as, say, Elden Ring or Genshin Impact, I still enjoy it for now. The lore of the game is quite difficult to find, and most of it is presented in the main story in a very lackluster way, to be honest. Very few details were from item descriptions, and for fuck's sake, a lot of these were taken from the loading screens. So if I made any mistakes with the background lore of the game, feel free to correct me in the comments down below. If you're interested in more lore from Tower of Fantasy though, let me know what kind of lore you want me to cover next. I was thinking of covering the Simulacrum's lore or maybe the characters, I'm not sure yet. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button. It really, really helps out with the algorithm. And as always, thank you for watching.